Let's see, let's see. I think it's recorded. Yeah, the recording has started. All right, now, so we're going to start off. We're going to do um, we're going to do session one today, which covers net energy and um, subsidies. OK, so we're going to learn what both of those things are um, and then starting um, starting on our next discussion day, we'll cover the fossil fuels, uh, coal, oil and natural gas. So today we've got net energy. So the chapter itself has starts with a case study um, fracking for oil and gas fracking with an R and an A, fracking for oil and gas. Um, and what fracking does, if we can look here at the big picture, I've, I've got you a big picture here that you can see a little bit easier. Um, this is a way, you know the oil wells that they use like in Texas, the big oil wells that suck up the, the black gooey stuff. Uh, when they run out, fracking is a way to get more stuff out of the well, okay, and try to, to to get more material. The oil that comes up from fracking is um, thick and gooey and not great, but we can clean it up. But what fracking gets us the most of is natural gas. Fracking has that, you have to look at it in the lessons we're doing. Um, we, we have to focus and try to balance what our whole class is about, is trying to balance environmental issues and taking care of the environment with the global economy. OK, so trying to get those two things to balance. So with this fracking, it has the capability to get us so much natural gas that we may not have to rely on foreign oil anymore, which is really incredible because almost every time that there's ever been a war. Overseas, it's about oil, especially in the Middle East. Anytime that we go to war with those guys, we may say it's for humanitarian reasons. We may say that this guy is treating his people so badly. We may say that this and this, oh, we've got to save these people. We've got to know that's what they tell you on the news. But every time there's been a war in the Middle East, it's because we want their oil and they're not giving us a cheap enough price on it. And so we decide to take guns over there so we can get their oil. No matter what they tell you, it's always about that. So. If this fracking can get us enough natural gas that the US may not ever need foreign oil again, that is a big deal. However, this fracking is horrendous for the environment that it's coming up out of. We've got to balance these two things. So let's see what this actually involves. OK, all right, so you have this old oil well and the old oil well brings its tubes down in here, OK? When it starts not to perform as well, they send in one of these natural gas wells. And so what happens, the way that they work, is they shove down water and sand and big, oh, nasty, nasty chemicals. I mean, mercury and stuff, the toxic chemicals, to shove that down in there. And when you shove that water and sand in there, it pushes up the natural gas from between the rock layers and whatever oil might be left. Um, so when you are doing that shoving down in there of all that water and that it, the water is incredibly polluted by the time you it comes back up. And knowing that sending it down, if you look right here, here's the deep aquifer. This is where we're getting drinking water from. OK, you are sending this disgusting water down in here and you know it's going to mix with the water table. You know it's going to start to pollute the ponds and swamps and, and rivers. What they say is that within this um, net fracking is they have collection ponds where this water comes back and they collect it and they, they try to contain it. It's containment ponds where they keep this dirty water. Um, and the best of the fracking companies will take that dirty water, try to reclean it and then use it again because the but it's incredibly expensive to do so. It is very, very complicated and very, very expensive and it eats into their bottom line. This whole thing, this section is talking about profit and making money and how they can sell this energy in the marketplace. You may not be able to hold energy in your hand, but you can sell it and make money off of it anyway. OK, and they do by the bucket loads. They make money off of selling energy. And so. Um, 
what we have then is the companies who are good and the companies who are trying to do right will take that dirty water, try to clean it, and then send it back down. Okay, but again, that's very, very expensive. The other companies who are just out for the money, okay, they will use fresh water and send it down and dirty it up. Get some more fresh water, send it down, dirty it up, get some more fresh water. Oh, the pond's getting full? Well, let it leak a little. Maybe when it rains, it kind of overflows and it goes on out. Then the pond's not full anymore. Well, now that water is out in the environment. The animals and the trees are trying to drink that crap that you just polluted all the pieces. All right, and worse, all that 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 pressure when they're sending that water down in is really, 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 really high pressure. I mean, boom, they send it down hard and fast. And areas that previously were geologically stable are now having earthquakes. This stuff is causing earthquakes, okay, because of the amount of pressure in there shifting the rock layers. All right, so. There are a ton of bad things. And one of, but also the possibility of some good. When you, the reason that we moved environmental science up to a senior level course is you guys are this close to being grown ups. You are this close to being grown ups. And this kind of stuff will be what you are voting on. This is the kind of stuff that the policies, the laws, um, the regulations, all of this stuff comes through the voting. And you know how politics can get, or you've heard how politics can get. It is real easy to twist things around to where the way you want them to be twisted. And only the people who are sharp can know um, how to stop that. Okay, you have to be sharp. You have to be woke, I guess is what you want to say. All right, um, but you have to know to be able to stop these people. And if you don't know, you don't know. So that's what we're trying to do here. Fracking, although it has the capability of reducing our reliance on foreign oil has horrendous effects to what it's doing to the people and the country right here in the US and the environment and the world right here in the US. Okay, so the lesson starts with this um, case study on fracking. Let me get this back big again or at least over here. That'll do. All right, so going through there, OK, the fracking will let us reach the hard, hard to reach oil and gas. It extends the life of these wells and lets us get a little bit more out of them, a little bit more out of them, a little bit more out of them. All right. Um, it uses the high pressure pumps. Now, when I went through the teaching video, um, I went through this more carefully. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of this, but the details of all of this are in the teaching video for you. All right, so it says the mixture contains salts, toxic heavy metals, radioactive. Processing the hazardous wastewater is a challenge. This is what I was telling you a minute ago right here. OK, the processing the hazardous wastewater is a challenge. It is very, very difficult. Um, and um, they try to store it in underground wells and surface holding ponds, but they leak. OK, it can spill off into the environment really, really easily. It gets sent to sewage treatment plants that are not able to clean that stuff. We can't clean that stuff up once you send it through there. It's too dirty. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, the best of the ones who are trying to do it right are going to clean that water and reuse it. That way they don't have to dirty up any more water. OK, but it costs a lot. So only the ones who are most environmentally sensitive will do that. And even then, if it starts to eat into their bottom line, they'll take shortcuts and they won't do it right. So you have to be very careful about all this stuff. Let me see. Let me get to the thing where I can flip this screen. All right. Um, no, maybe not. OK, let's do it this way. All right. All right. So they say that fracking marks a new or era in oil. Like I said, we might be able to reduce reduce or possibly even eliminate our need for foreign oil, but it's going to get a lower net energy compared to traditional production. All right, now what I mean by net energy, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. Um, well, let me just get this here. The only, the, okay, yeah, okay. So net energy, it's the same thing as net profit, okay? So whatever it costs to make or do or build or create this thing, okay? and you have that cost on the front end, then you have the price that you hope somebody's gonna pay for it. You subtract the price they pay for it from what you it costs you to make it, and that's your net profit. Most of you guys are fully comfortable with that idea. 
you have some cost to make the thing. People pay you for the thing and you use that to pay your bills and then the rest you get to keep. That's your profit. Net energy works exactly the same way. When you are um, and the only way that this fracking will work, OK, is if you get a lot of money when people want to pay for it to cover all of these expenses. If the price of oil goes down, fracking is going to be too expensive to be viable. OK, so the only way that fracking will work is if the oil prices stay high and hopefully that's something that's not going to happen because that way we can lower the prices at the gasoline, the gas tanks. All right, so commercial energy is exactly what it sounds like. It's energy that is sold. OK, and again, even though you can't touch it and feel it, energy is worth billions. And there are some ideas that I'm going to send you. If you guys haven't decided how to make your millions yet, I got some suggestions for you today. OK, I got some suggestions on how you can make your millions. All right, between this chapter and next, there's money to be made in this energy market. All right, so commercial energy again is energy that's sold and you know already or you should know, OK, what the non renewable resources are. OK, those are the ones we use up too fast. It's the fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas, plus minerals and nuclear. Make sure you include those. We we all know we say non renewables. That's the bad ones. That's the fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas. We've got that just about memorized. Make sure, though, that you include minerals like uranium and gold and platinum. OK, the minerals and nuclear energy, they go with the non renewables. And of course, the renewables, you know that those are the good ones. All right, wind, water, sun, biomass, which is remember I was talking about the algae yesterday, biomass that's in there. Um, and also when I talked about, well, I will in a minute, biomass and then heat from the interior geothermal. I'm going to cover all of the renewables in chapter 13 and the idea and the possibilities are immense. Like I said, if you're looking for a place to make your millions, I got some plans for you, OK? All of this is just really freaking amazing. So let's think about as far as renewable versus non renewable. What's going on in the world right now? OK, and that's what I have here. I'll do this in a second. OK, I'll come back to that. All right, so in the world right now, only about 10 percent of the, the energy we use comes from the good sources. In this one, the yellow is the, the geothermal, solar, wind and biomass. And this one, the yellow is water. OK, I don't know why they did the colors differently. And this one, the brown is geothermal, solar, wind and biomass. And in this one, the brown is hydropower. So only 10 percent. All the rest of these are the non renewables, the bad ones. OK, so what we have to do is we have to try to get this switched up. OK, and so we're going to talk about again plans. We're going to be making plans. All right. And again, you guys, even if you know that this is not. In your future, you know, uh, as far as making plans of making energy and possibly put, doing a living with this stuff, even if you know that that's not you, you do know that you and MLGW are going to be best buds or worst enemies for the rest of your life. OK, you and, or whatever electric company, if you decide to move out of here, whatever electric company is there, you and that electric company are going to be best buds or worst enemies for the rest of your life. So this information will help you. All right. Let's see. Now it takes energy to make energy. Let's let me go back to here. This stuff that is up here. It takes energy to make energy. So you have the energy you produce. OK, and then the energy you consume that gives you net energy. That's the 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 buyer's end of it. OK, this picture here covers the buyer's end. The person who at your own home where you are paying for your electric bill. All right, but the makers end of it is slightly different. It takes energy to make energy. You're not going to get energy for free. OK, you have to harness, extract and process and then deliver the energy. OK, um, you're going to have to have the vehicles for it, the machinery, the roads, the pipeline, waste ponds, storage, storage tanks, housing, um, truck and tractors to drive it around everywhere. All of these things, if you all of these things when you do an energy are going to cost are going to play into the cost of it. Think about it. You have to make the machines, the vehicles, the machinery, the roads, the pipeline, the waste ponds, the storage tanks and the trucks that are going to carry it and you have to pay everybody's salary that is working in all these places. All of that factors into the cost to make the energy and then 
the net energy is the difference between all of that cost, the energy returned. How much energy did you make, actually? I'm not even talking money now. I'm talking how much energy did you make in this process, considering you have all this other to put out. All right, so net energy is the energy minus the energy returned is your energy invested. Net energy is the return minus the investment. It works exactly the same way as money does. OK. All right, so let me go back to here. We're not ready for subsidies yet. All right, so before an oil can be used, OK, it has to be located, pumped up from beneath the ground and the ocean floor, transported to a refinery, converted to gasoline, diesel and other fuels and chemicals and then delivered to the customers. Oh, I messed up the thingy. Hang on. Uh, control Z. OK, all right, so. That all every one of those steps, OK, where you have to find the oil, you have to pump it up from the ground to the ocean, you have to transport it to a refinery, you have to convert it to the gasoline diesel. OK, and then you have to take it out to the customers. Every one of those steps takes high energy fuel, usually gasoline, gasoline or diesel. Every one of those things is going to cost fuel. And then while you're doing that, imagine all the diesel fuel that you put in a truck. That diesel fuel gets turned into heat. You can't reuse that. So you're putting high quality in, OK? Putting high quality energy in and getting just heat and crap out. Are you getting enough energy from the oil field to cover all of this? That's what we're talking about. A lot of that energy is wasted as heat, OK? So are you getting enough energy from the oil field to cover what you're spending to get it out? As we talk about each of the four, um, each of the types of oil and each of the types of energy, we're going to use this idea of net energy. Is it worth it? The process to make it happen. Are you going to get a, enough energy at the end? We're going to use low, middle and high. The high net energy is the ones that are good. You get a lot of energy for the work you put in. The middle and low, especially the low, is it's not worth it. It costs so much money to get in. By the time you get the energy out, there's not much left. There's not that much pulling out and you put way more in than you get out. Those are the ones with the low net energy. And if a net energy is zero or a negative number, which it can be, okay, you put way more in than you're able to get out. This is what nuclear fusion is for us right now. You put so much energy in, we get so little energy out. OK, that's going to be a zero or a negative. If that's the case, you're going to need subsidies. OK, now let me explain what a subsidy is. OK, anytime you're trying to sell something, like we said, this works for making stuff, creating stuff, building stuff, doing stuff. Anytime you're trying to sell some sort of product in the market, anytime you're going to sell anything, whether it's energy or paintings or even pumping out students out of a college. OK, if the powers that be, the, the government or some other power thinks that your product is worth it, they will help you pay the bills some. Think about how much it costs for a farmer, okay? He has to buy the animals, he has to buy the grain, he has to buy the tractors, he has to do all of this work and all this stuff to get his corn to the market, okay? If and, and if his bills are too high, anytime you're trying to make something, if your bills are too high, depending on what somebody's going to pay at the end, and you can't pay your bills to make it, then you can't make it, can you? If the bills are too big to make the thing, and you're not going to make enough money by the time you're done, you can't make the thing. Well, here's where subsidies come in. If the government or somebody in power thinks whatever it is you're making is worth it, they will help pay some of your bills. So subsidies in themselves are not a bad thing. So let me go over, but they can be twisted so easily. OK, this is government that we're talking about. All right, and people in power that we're talking about. All right, so it can be twisted and corrupted incredibly easy, but as an overall, what is a subsidy? Okay, here's your definition right here. Is everybody listening for what subsidies are and you'll be able to answer questions about them? I'm hoping you guys understand net net energy because I did go over that well enough. And I'm now going over subsidies and I need to make sure you understand that as well. Okay, so a subsidy, especially guys, not just for my test, man. 
they throw subsidies all over the place on the voting ballots and the government and Congress. And they're asking you to approve these subsidies when all it is is one rich person putting money in the pocket of some other rich person. OK, so you need to know what a subsidy is and which ones are good and which ones are not so that when you are voting and making policy, you can choose good ones. Are you listening? You got this close to being grownups. Are you listening? You're going to need to do this. You're going to need to know. OK, so what subsidies are, they're money that's paid by a government or some other authority, whoever's in power, to help an industry or business or to pay for a public service. So what I have down here are some examples for you to kind of help you explain it. Let me give just a tiny bit more. Um, this is what I'm trying to do. All right. All right. So first, um, biofuel subsidies for farmers. OK, you know that farmers, um, we just said that their bills are incredibly high. All right. And but think about the cows and the pigs and chickens. OK, that all of the possible animal poo that's involved when they are cleaning out the stalls, the hay that is rotting, the seeds that are rotting and the animal poo when they clean the stalls. A lot of farmers are trying to set up biofuel refineries on their farms and they can use this cleaned out stall material. I mean, poo and dead hay and, and all this stuff to create biofuel. Now, these are incredibly expensive to set up. But once you set them up, you have a secondary source of income. Yes, you're making money off the farm, but you are also making money off the biofuel that the animals are creating for free. That is a good subsidy. It is so expensive to set up on the front end. So if the government or some other power is willing to help you set that up and they get, of course, a bit of the chunk of the change when you make money. All right. So that is what a good subsidy would be. Another good subsidy here for the solar panels, and this will affect you guys um, trying to set up solar panels, retrofitting solar panels on an older home or as you're building a home to build it green. The government will give you money for that as well. If you go through the right programs, there is money to turn your house solar. All right. Now the, this one here, apprenticeship schemes. Now this brings us into the idea of people. So if if there is a college or a trade school that is putting out students of a high enough quality. Now that's the key. The students that are coming out of this college or this trade school need to be of a high enough quality. If these students coming out are a high enough quality, then a lot of the governments will help fund the trade school and the, the colleges. If the students are coming out in a quality rate. This next one here, this is happening actually right now aiding businesses that are making losses because of COVID. A lot of the small businesses are not doing well because the customers can't come out to see them or they uh, they couldn't until just recently. The customers couldn't come see them, so they're not making bit and making money. So the government decided these people were worth it and they helped them pay the bill. That's what a subsidy is. It's when government helps you pay the bills. Now this one down here is one that's going to bring into mind the money. This is for you guys. You listening? You ready to make your millions? Are you ready to make your millions? You listening yet? Wind farm investment. If you have a big pasture or some big land or something and you set up 10 or 12 turbines on it, then you can sell that energy from the wind turbines to MLGW. Instead of you sending them a check every month, they'll send you one. They will pay you. All right. Now those setting up those those wind farms though is incredibly expensive to buy all those turbines, which is why subsidies are of value. The government or the in this case probably city or county government will pay the taxes to help you get that wind farm because they know that all of the wind you are the extra. I mean, of course, you're going to power your house off of it, but the rest of the energy is going to get sent to MLGW and they will have even more to send to their customers. Can you imagine if you didn't have to have power outages so often? OK, it's not always the wires. Sometimes it's the fact that the company can't keep up with demand. All right, so this is what a subsidy is. So I think that brings us close to the end. Let me see. All right, um, let me see. Because I know we're getting close to the end. Yep, we are. All right, so with today's discussion, 
All right, give me some thumbs up in the cameras. Do you get um, net energy where you have this cost that it makes? You have it costs you to get it and make it, and you have to subtract that out of the energy that gets made. Okay, net energy. How about subsidies? You guys, thank you, baby. You guys are getting th subsidies where the government helps you pay your bills if they think what you're doing is youth worth it. Good, good. Now, can you see the possibility of corruption within the subsidies? That's one of the worst things. What if the people are called lobbyists? Lobbyists are the guys who try to get the money for the government to give a subsidy to this thing or that thing or the other thing. OK, the lobby lobbyists are hired by this person, that person or the other person or this company or that company um, to get money from the government in the form of subsidies. So lobbyists are the guys who try to get subsidies from the government. Now, it is really, really, really easy for the lobbyists to become corrupt and the politicians to become corrupt. And um, again, one rich person putting money in the pocket of the next rich person in trading for favors and all sorts of stuff that happens in the back back rooms of the government. So subsidies on their own are not bad, but they have the potential to be corrupt. It's almost time to go I'm about to shut off this meeting, but be sure that as you are voting, you can understand how subsidies work and you can have your eyes open for bad ones. OK, I'm going to stop the recording.